Hello YouTube. So this week we are going to install this onto this. If you don't want to know what this is, this is the Easy ABL. This is an auto bed level sensoring package. Uh, I just had to print out the uh, mount. Uh, we're going to go through the entire installation. And this is going to be a bit longer video than usual because uh, I just want to make sure we get all the details right so that if you decide you want to put one of these on your printer, hey, maybe this video can serve as a reference for you. So I've already printed out the sensor mount and we'll cover how to mount that onto the print head. Uh, we're going to get this guy installed. We're going to get the electronics and the uh, Z limit switch uh, attached over here. We're going to do the firmware. We're going to do all of it. So you ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to where nerdy is cool. This is where we cover all my cool hobbies that I find cool. BB-8 building, Stormtrooper, R2 building, 3D printing, you name it, I cover it. Cause I like all that stuff. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. Make sure you check out all my other videos. If you're a regular viewer, thanks for coming back. And to everybody, if you're not already a subscriber, mash that button and consider becoming one. This way you're alerted to my new videos and you don't want to miss those, do you? So today we are covering the Easy ABL. This is the auto bed level sensor that uh, is offered by TH3D Studios. Uh, Tim was generous enough to offer me one for a very deep discount. Uh, the only caveat was, hey, you know, I'll, I'll send you one of these and give you a big discount, but you know, could you please do a review or, or, or you know, let us know what you think of it in your channel? And I said, sure, that's great. I've been, I've been reading about these things for a little while. I've had a lot of questions about them and it's really cool to be able to try one out. So this one, this is the Easy Connect version. There are two versions. There's a direct wire version and then there's the Easy Connect one. The Easy Connect is five bucks more because he's including a power supply. And he also has in the electronic side here, there's a connector where the Z limit switch goes. And in the direct wire one, essentially it's just that direct wire. Uh, what you do is on each end of the electronics box, there's two crimp on connectors. So what you would do is the direct wire would get power from the electronics box of whatever printer you're putting this onto. So you would put the 12 volt into that and then your Z limit switches, you would just remove the connector and put the bare wire leads onto the other end and off you go. You know, you save five bucks if you're comfortable doing that. If you're like me and you like convenience, five bucks more is not a problem. Speaking of saving money, he has offered us a 10% off coupon code. So if you're interested in getting one of these kits, Tim has generously offered the coupon code where nerdy is cool 10 and you can get 10% off. So thank you very much, Tim. And hey, if you guys are thinking about getting one, check that out. So I think I have everything set up. I've got the laptop going, I've got the screen capture software, I've got my handy dandy GoPro. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting this guy together and we're gonna do the amount to the print head. I printed this in PLA. I, I was a little concerned at first thinking, well, I'm putting a probe and I'm putting it next to the print head. I'm hoping PLA will work. So I think it will because it's sitting beside a giant fan and well, we'll just have to see. Experimentation, right? So we're gonna do that. We'll cover that on video, getting that mounted up. We'll get this guy mounted up. Um, there's also, it has to be a certain distance off the bed. Um, well, I'm thinking of it, there's a couple prerequisites if you're going to do an upgrade like this. First of all, before you're doing anything with a bed leveling uh, solution, you want to make sure, this sounds dumb, but I'm going to say it, make sure your bed's level. So if you haven't done it already, go ahead and you know heat up the heated bed and uh, get the uh, auto home and get that guy and then crank your level until you've got a level bed. Then, and since you have a good foundation to work with, then you can attach this and then off we go. So. That covers the prerequisites on the printer. Uh, let's see, I got cameras. What else do I need to cover? The firmware. Okay, so if you want, you can upgrade and use your existing firmware if you want. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the TH3D unified firmware that he offers. And the nice thing is in the zip file, there's a couple of things, and I'll show you a little further on here in the video, that are gonna make this setup extremely easy. Because when people think about working with firmware, they're like, oh my God, no, never mind, I'll just deal with it. I, did, I don't wanna mess with firmware. No, this, this is so, so easy, it's, it's great. Um, so I will show you that and demonstrate that because there's literally, there's, I think, four lines of code we have to mess with, and that's it. 
So let's get the camera set up and let's get to the next part of this build. All right, <clears throat> get the GoPro going. Got the, uh, this is the CR10, this is the OEM shroud. I'll put that in front of the camera here. This is the one that I'm gonna be using for this one. As you can see, it's just gonna lay over this guy. All we gotta do is pull these screws out, <clears throat> lay this in place, and then put the screws back in. And uh, it's got the uh, feature in the back here so that uh, it will uh, fit flush and uh, not have that screw interfere with it. So without further delay, let's do that. Let's feed you in. Okay, now I just want to make sure that that's not going to interfere with anything. All right, well, a few little difficulties here. So there's that. Let's untangle all this stuff here. All right, well, we know that I was just thinking I probably should have uh, made sure that that was going to fit through there without any kind of rubbing, but it's in. All right, and obviously. Yeah, we're just going to kind of. I guess for first guesses that will work all right. And again, we're not gonna go crazy on how tight this is or the top is. All right. Too crazy on these guys, whereas we're just starting. Fortunately, I got tons of these, so I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of matching where the other stuff is uh, taped up and bundled. my game making noises. Alright, prepare. Let's see how you can put on. Okay, now that's all I need from that guy. Alright, so now with the printer off, I can actually Going forward and backward a little bit here. Now, 
Where is my wrench? Now, wrench, <clears throat> the directions say that the sensor should be two millimeters uh, off the, uh, let me move this a little bit here. I'm, I'm hope we have the right angle on you. Let's move you down a little bit here. So it looks like, <clears throat> I was checking around and, let me uh, reset this guy. So we want two millimeters, give or take. And this thing is, the wrench is pretty much two millimeters thick. So, let's turn this guy on. So what we're gonna do is, well, that's not too far off. I almost wanna leave it alone. But, but let's follow the directions to a T. <clears throat> I'm not trying to go crazy tight, but obviously that print head is gonna bounce around, so. Just want to make sure we're good there. Yeah, that's too. It's got a little bit of play, but let's go that way. Let's start with that. All right. So sensor is mounted. We have that. Um, we'll refer to our documentation here. Okay, so we know where the power goes. The power, got the cord right here. And then the Z down here. This guy's gonna come out. Now we'll have to test a little bit later on in the documentation because we're hoping, and we'll find out when we run the code, if this is wired right. There's some variance in how these have been put together by Creality. And uh, so this is going to go into this guy. There we go. All right, we'll put power on this guy. Okay, I did a little backpedaling here, and I want to show you exactly what I did. So the directions say, at least in this version that I have, um, once you get this installed, and then once you plug in the Z-limit switch, and you plug in power, uh, it says you should have a red light inside here and up top here. Well, the problem is that you also, and I just let Tim know, he's gonna alter his documentation. Uh, see, when you touch here, it does have it now, okay? But if you don't have this, Sometimes what you'll have to do is you'll have to adjust up here the sensitivity and you turn that clockwise. So right now it's there. I can turn it back or forth. Uh, let's see, if I'm going clockwise, I want to go backwards. So right now I don't have anything. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's only, so now it's off. So let me go forward a little bit. Come back. There you are. So there we go. Whoops. So that, and then we have the red light in here. So that means it is engaged. So, very good. All right, so now to the computer fun. So we're gonna go to the website right now for uh, th3dstudio.com. So this is their website. And what we're looking for is the firmware we're gonna be using. And where he currently has this is under the knowledge base. And I have a CR10S. So I'm gonna go here. I want the TH3D Unified Firmware. And that's gonna lead me to all the information about that. And we're gonna scroll through this. He has some information about how to get it here. Uh, this is the latest version. If we scroll down a little bit further, we'll find out more information. Uh, he's also gonna cover the development, the features, a lot of notes, change logs and such. Uh, as of the time of this filming, this is the latest version right here, the May 5th version. We'll scroll back up here because he does have the latest one here. 
So I'm going to download that. And this is going to go to his OneDrive. And I've already downloaded, already downloaded this. This is why I'm getting the uh, uh, parentheses one here. So I'm going to download that. I already have it. So I just wanted to show you guys where you can get it. So now what I'm going to do is I have un I have decompressed the file and if you don't know how to do that that that's pretty easy you can do it in Windows as well too uh, Windows has their own uh, decompression uh, I can't say decompression right but I use 7-zip so I just right click 7-zip and then I extract it here I've already done this and when you look here you're gonna see he has all this information here for you now we're interested in the firmware and notice down here he has open firmware windows dot bat. Now, if you're not a computer person, you're gonna have no idea what that means. Um, so let me give you an idea what it is. It's a bat is a batch file. It's gonna execute a couple commands here for you. And uh, this way you don't have to do them. So what this is gonna do here when I double click on this, this is gonna open up the TH3D Arduino IDE. So what he's done is he's got this linked out so that it's gonna open up with his customized um, Arduino and as you can see here here it is it's open here and he has made this in very large font uh, so you know exactly what you're looking for to see if I can pull that down a little bit here oh maybe not okay so the only thing we're going to be touching here is the configuration.h tab right here and here you have the instructions of what we have to do now one thing that you'll notice that is not here that I know some people like to see and here's how you can do it, and that's the line numbers. That's under File, Preferences, and uh, Display Line Numbers. And you hit OK, and now you can see the line numbers. I know sometimes people like to have them so that they have issues. They can say, well, I'm working on line number rather than trying to say, you know, because this is a fairly lengthy document. So, okay, so let's get back to it. So uncomment means removing the two forward slashes. Uh, if you know a little bit about programming, that's basically, it's a rem, so it's a remark. And what we're going to do is, if you have Easy ABL, we just have to uncomment the define Easy Able, then uncomment the mount you're using with the printer. And if you have custom unsupported mount, blah, blah, blah. So he has all the directions right here. And he tells you everything you need to know. So he's got it all listed right out as far as for the Tornado, Taz, etc., etc. Tells you exactly what boards. So what we're going to do, and of course we have the cautions. Uh, we have the configuration. Now this is for the original CR10 which has the Melzi board, which is this one right here. This is not what we're going to be dealing with today. And then we have the CR10S options. This is what we do have. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this because we have a CR10S. If you had any of these printers, you would remove those uh, remarks or those two backslashes. Okay, and if you are having issues with your stock CR10 filament sensor, uncomment the line below. Well, I, I am not using the filament detection because I've seen where a lot of people have had a lot of false readings from it. So I don't use it. Uh, mine still has the PCB attached to the end of it so that it's not in use. Now, what I could do here is I could remove this and I could also, at the end of the filament detection sensor cable, I could remove that PCB. But it's not harming anything being plugged in. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay, and then if you wanna use a CR10 LCD with the, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna mess with this because I'm a stock setup. Uh, as well, I'm not gonna do anything with the easy up filament sensor because I do not have that. But I do need to enable and remove these two remarks. I do have the easy enable. And the amount I have is the OEM. So we're gonna remove that. So that, is basically all you have to do. Now there's another option and it's further down here. It's kind of an advanced setting, but uh, on my printer, I'm using the binder clips and I do find that no matter what I do for bed leveling, they always wind up in the way. So down much lower through here under the advanced options, this is all the configurations for these other printers. Okay, here it is through here. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with how many points it's gonna use. If you want to probe in on the bed more than 15 millimeters, change this below. So we don't want to use 30 millimeters because as he indicates here, we'll be right on top of where the uh, screws are. So he had suggested 
45 to me. So I am going to change that to 45. And again, I'm only making this change because I'm using the binder clips. Um, if you're not using them or if you're using something else, you can probably ignore this completely. Or you could try it, um, you could try it with the default setting. Uh, and if it does wind up problematic, you know where to go to fix this. So this part is done. Now, I haven't got this plugged into the, uh, 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 can't think. So I do not have this plugged into the printer right yet, but let's go ahead and uh, work on that because we want to make sure it detects the port. So, so there's part one. Oh, I have the wrong cable. One of these days, I'm going to have a printer where they all have the exact same USB cable. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, so those guys are plugged in. I can see the Creality logo. It looks a little bit different under this. Okay, so. We have this going, a couple things of note. So if we look under um, tools and we look under processor, see he's already done all the work for us. The port, I just have to tell it port for. But as far as the board, he's, this would usually be a big long list of boards. He's reduced it with this firmware, with the printer supported to just the boards that are relevant. So this is a, this is a nice cleanup. Otherwise you would have a lot of other options. Same thing goes with the processor. It would, there would be a lot more listed here. So he has whittled down the, the IDE here, the uh, developer interface here, so that you're only seeing what's relevant. So this, this is a nice touch. Uh, so I have everything I need here, so I should be ready to go ahead and let's verify. So we'll let it compile the sketch, make sure all is well. And then what I can do is when that is done, this way I can catch any errors I have to fix, then I can send it up to the printer. Okay, it took a little bit longer than I expected, but I'm also running a bunch of stuff in the background. The other nice thing I wanted to mention about the, uh, the configuration program and, and the way that he has his opening up Arduino is you don't have to worry about, you know, I know on some of these I've heard where you have to load certain libraries, all that work is done by just double clicking on that batch file. He's done all the work for you with this custom version of the uh, Arduino uh, uh, IDE. So this is, this is nice. All right, so that's been compiled. So now I get to send this over to the printer and uh, ironically, it's gonna do the verify all over again and then send it over to the printer. So this is gonna take a few minutes. We'll let it cook and see what happens. Okay, we just uploaded the firmware. Good. All right, new firmware is up. Sorry that fan is so noisy on my printer. But now we can move on to the next step of uh, get everything configured now. Okay, so pardon my stupendously loud CR10 hot hot fan or whatever it is. Um, it's that's not the electronics box. It's coming from the uh, uh, the front there. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. So here we are, and I have the documentation here as well. So this is telling us, okay, we, uh, we want to do a check the end stop is being properly recognized by your board. Okay, right now the lights are off. Very good. So we want to do an M119. If it shows open, place your finger.
Alright, so it shows triggered when I get my finger on it. Okay, so it seems that that is a good sign. Okay, so we're at the part of the instructions where we are setting the sensitivity. Uh, so what we have done is we have lifted the Z-axis three millimeters as it says to do off the bed. We are heating the bed to 60 degrees Celsius and it is at 60 degrees Celsius just now. So what we're going to do following his instructions, we're going to adjust the sensor by turning the small screw on top of it. It's a brass color. Yeah, we've messed with that before. And there's a few steps. If you have an AC bed, you would shut it off. But the sensor is ready to turn the screw. All right, well, ours is off right now. So now turn the screw clockwise slowly until the LED sensor turns on. So, and he said clockwise. So. Okay, so right there, we have lights. Okay, move your hands away from the sensor. If it shots over or flickers, you do this turn again. Okay. Okay, so there we are. On to the next step. Okay, so I've already gone through a couple of steps to get my configuration working, and now that I understand the gist of it a whole lot better, um, kind of backing up and going through it again so that I can explain it to you guys. So what I'll do is between the GoPro here, which, which is staring at the uh, uh, bed over here, and then uh, I also have the uh, remote control, oh sorry, I got the machine control of the uh, printer going through Simplify 3D, and I got the printer doing its thing. So what you want to do once you're at this point, first of all, you want to heat the bed to 60 degrees Celsius and you want to let it heat up for, I guess he recommends five minutes. So that's what I've done. It's been sitting here at 60 degrees Celsius heating up. The other thing I did is I heated, I heated up the nozzle because I got a little bit of filament there coming out of there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the control for the temperature of the nozzle. And I'm just going to bring that all the way down to zero. But what had happened was during a previous print, there was a little blob at the end, and obviously I need that blob to melt away or get out of there so that we can do these next steps. So if you are following along with me, those are two things you want to do. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to be switching back and forth here on the screen. So right now we're doing the setting your Z offset and he recommends you watch one of his videos that explains to you how it's done. Um, if you're a visual type person, well if you're watching this video you probably are, right? But uh, if, if reading this wall of text doesn't set in, this video might help, so that's good. So essentially what we're going to do, and what I've already done, is I've done the G28 which is going to home the sensor. And then what we're going to do is once it's done that homing, it's going to tell us that We'll notice on the display right here that either we're going to be 10 millimeter or 5 millimeter um, off the bed. That's not including our Z offset. So what we need to do is we need to move the Z down uh, either 5 or 10 millimeter, uh, whichever uh, our firmware did uh, before proceeding. So and that's fine. We got that all set up. And what we're going to do is the offset I have on this particular device is I think because I've already done it. Let me just make sure here on the motion. It's 2.75. So what we're gonna do, let me jump back and simplify 3D. Okay, so we're gonna go into our jaw controls. I got my little piece of paper here. And we are going to bring this down. One, two, three, four, five. And then what we would do, or what you would do, with a piece of paper under here, you would keep on bringing this down by 0.1 until you got to the point where you have friction here. Now I know, for example, mine is set to 2.75, so I'm gonna bring it down to that level. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So there's a little bit of friction right there. You can, you can feel it against there. So it looks like I should be maybe adjusting mine as well too. Matter of fact, if I go one more down, I can't. That's <laughs> I can't move it. So I know from experience that there's always a little bit of difference with these Z, step, these, uh, Z stepper drivers between models. So I know that right now that feels all right Oops, with the end blowing. But I know from the print I did previously that when I had it set like that, that the test print printed way too, too close to the bed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the bed up 0.1. Okay. So what I have now is 7.80. And essentially that would be bringing my number down from what I have now. So I initially had uh, 2.75 or negative 2.75. Uh, let's see. So, if I really wanted to be fancy, uh, what I could do is I could bring it down to this new value, but there's literally, you know, almost no difference. Currently, my Z offset is set to negative 2.75. To where I've measured right now, the difference is 0 0.04. So, I could try that, I suppose. Let's see. But that's the gist of how you get this number. And that's what he demonstrates here in the program as well. So let me get us back to uh, where we're at. Your experience may be different. That's why we're doing this testing. So what we're going to do is now I'm going to go back to the communication and we're going to give another G28. Okay, so we are currently 7.79 above the bed, which is the five millimeters plus the 2.79 we put in the Z offset. So let's go back in the jaw controls and let's bring that down to 7.80. So we need to go here. So that is how this process works. I hope it's not too convoluted to figure out. The next step through here in his documentation is going to be uh, using his start code. Now there's some interesting things I want to point out here. I, I know this is probably super dry, but if you just cut and paste what he has in your Simplify 3D or your Cura in the startup G code, and if you're, if you're wondering where you find that, go back in here that's going to be right there now one thing to be aware of is that when this is probing around the bed what it's going to do is for example my first layer is printed at 250 degrees Celsius this thing is going to get to that temperature and then it's going to start probing those 16 locations across the bed and as you're well aware is that when the bed I'm sorry when the printhead stops heating it cools off rapidly and that's what I noticed right away so by the time it got to the very last one the temperature readout here instead of being 215 was 192 which for the PLA I use barely gets through the nozzle so when I had done my first test when it had tried to do the purge process and tried to do the first part of the print it was it had just started to heat the printhead back up and it wasn't getting enough flow. It wasn't hot enough. So what you can do in here, uh, let's see, make sure I pulled the right one here, is he puts in yellow as well too. You know, make sure you replace your starting code and over in here where it says G4S10 where you're waiting for the heaters to recover, that's what the S10 is. That's for how long. So this makes a lot of sense. What I did on mine is I bumped it up to 20 seconds and that seemed to be just right for my CR10. 
I, I, I me decided to go 25 seconds just to be on the safe side. But that's another thing during this configuration, you're going to find that a few things you have to fine tune along the way. So then outside of that, we're ready to do a, a print. Let's make sure that these settings are going to work and see how it goes. And also, well, before I jump to that, if as you saw earlier, we had secured the cabling uh, so that it was you know, around the bow and tube electronics. And you want to make sure the back half is the same story because now the bed is going to be moving back and forth. So make sure that everything is uh, set up and able to be moved around as far as your cabling goes uh, without anything getting snagged. So now, let's do some prints. Okay, the printer is approaching the target temp. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen. The baby step. Looks like I should raise that a little bit. Okay, that print completed, and uh, hopefully, minus the glare here, you can see that. Uh, I only raise it very, very slightly. It just looked like that when this first part of the skirt was going down, it looked like it was mashed a little too much. So I baby stepped it up to 0 0.024. Could have gone a little higher, it looks like, but still not terrible and fairly easy to control. And of course, the caveat here is the CR10 has this big giant shroud around the print head. So for a small print like this, it's very difficult to get your head under there and see what's going on. So it's much easier if you get a larger print uh, or especially, you know, if you wanted, you could also make the skirt offset a lot further out so that you can kind of see what's going on under that giant shroud. It's in, we did it. The directions at first glance, when I was first thinking about buying one of these things a few months ago, I saw those instructions and thought, yeah, maybe not for me. But you know what? Thanks to the generous offer and the huge discount I got from Tim uh, over the TH3D Studios, uh, I was able to get one of these. I did the Easy Connect version because it's easy. Um, and I got to tell you, it's gone together really, really well. And I did have a couple questions along the way. And Tim was very gracious at answering those questions for me. Uh, I'll say this for Tim. He, he very much appreciates feedback. I, you know, I've dealt with a lot of uh, manufacturers and suppliers over the years and they're great at selling you stuff, but when you write back and have suggestions or maybe, you know, hey, you know, I got some, um, you know, maybe, you know, you could do this or that with your product. Eh, not very many are very responsive, but Tim's been very responsive and I've offered a lot of suggestions, especially on the writing of the uh, documentation. You know, just some ways to make it easier for, for more guys and gals who want to who want to use this product. Um, these printers, there's a lot of beginners that are getting them, and something like the Easy ABL is definitely something I I'm, I'm certain that they'd be interested in. But maybe when they're looking through the directions and the install guides, or the lack of a lot of YouTube videos showing how to put it all together, uh, you know, may have kind of driven them away for now. But I'm hoping the whole purpose of this video was to go from unboxing, installation, software, tuning, and getting prints off the printer with it. So I'm hoping this video is gonna be helpful whether or not you buy one of these products or not. I just hope it was giving you all the information and maybe even the confidence to go ahead and try adding one of these to your printer. Uh, again, the Where Nerdy is Cool 10 is the coupon code that he has offered. That gives you 10% off any of his kits uh, at th3dstudio.com. Um, so that said, I hope you guys have found this video very useful. Uh, I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. If you like my videos and you're not a subscriber yet, please mash that button. I would love to have over a thousand subscribers by summertime. 
The numbers have been going up, 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 and I really appreciate you guys watching, subscribing, and telling your friends about me. Uh, if you want to help me financially, there are two ways you can do so. There's patreon.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. And then there's the, on the YouTube page for my channel, uh, there's a link up there that says donate via PayPal. And if you want to give me a couple bucks, whether it be for coffee or if you want to donate a little bit more, or a little bit less, completely up to you. Like I said, it's a lot of fun making these videos. Uh, there's a few things I like to do in the future. I'd like to invest in some newer equipment or some additional equipment for a couple of the takes I'm doing. Um, the GoPro Essentials is kind of <laughs> not my favorite and there's a few things I would like to do in the future. But having said that, I like what I'm doing. I'm getting some really good feedback and I thank you guys for that. Now, on social media, you can find me on facebook.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. You can find me on Instagram under where nerdy is cool. And I have my own website where nerdy is cool .com. So those are the ways you can reach me. I thank you guys for watching. I look forward to your feedback. I hope this was very useful to those of you that are thinking about adding one of these easy ABL devices to your printer. I think it's going to be very good. Uh, I hope I've taken some of the complicated stuff out of it for you and uh, made this something that uh, is well within your grasp. I, I, I think if, if you're able to print and, ta and handle the firmware, uh, I think you'll enjoy this kit. So, until next time, you know what's coming up, right? This is where Nerdy is cool.